you have done so far? Dear, Ernie, Ernie, or if your students are having like a, some specialties or something that you really wanted to acquire, you go with the differentiate instructions. There are so many people learn different ways, right? So this is the use, this is the instruction strategies that are commonly used when you are teaching. Not necessarily as being a teacher in a standard uh, in, in, in school, like what you know, but also in courses, or probably if you are a private teacher, you can also use these strategies. Okay? First is the lecturing or tutoring instruction. Okay? So you, like me, I present the information to the whole class. I am the source. Right? Now, okay, this is effective for delivering concepts, like the lecture method that you learned yesterday, right? Delivering content, explaining concept, providing foundational knowledge. Okay, so for example, you're, you're teaching about Music. Which part of music that requires this? Probably when they learn about how to read the notes, right? So, so you should use this to if the if the picture is like this, then you go with this is this is a uh, the value is this, so you do it like this, right? That's a concept, right? And then the consideration is that it's supposed it should be not complemented with other strategies to maintain student engagement. Because when I talk one way, I guarantee you can only listen to me to me concerning for ten minutes. And then the rest of it, you will fall asleep. <laughs> right? Okay, so here, uh, it's okay to, to go with the lecture as long as you also combine it with other strategies. Why? Because you need to maintain your student's condition. Okay, your student's involvement. Okay, the second one, any question for this? Right? And the two is over the learning. Over the learning is when you put students together, they work together to solve a problem in small groups. So there's one kind of goal. For example, you give your students like uh, find the solution to conserve the water. Okay? So they are like commonly over the learning, it goes with four people in one group, I believe. For we four people in one group, age lab of the level depends on the teacher. Whether they're going to be of the same level, different level, yeah? So it depends on the objective of the lesson. But then, uh, the thing is, over the learning is that it is very suggestible. It is, it is suggested, okay? Uh, nowadays, it just promotes Teamwork, communication skills, and we share responsibility. Because so many, what do you call them? Um, I forgot. Not strategies. So many form of offer the learning. Probably you do it, probably you also do it in class, but you might not realize it or, yeah. Like, ah, I wish you did that. Number heads together. Number heads together. You, uh, you, you group the students. Four, right? And then you ask them to, so who's number one, number two, number three, number four. And then that is, that is their home group. And then you can fight them. So number one goes to number one, number two goes to number two, number three goes to number three, number three, four. And then you give them problems. Okay? They solve the same problem for each group. And then they go back to, the, to their home groups. There they share. So everyone in the group has to So that's where they learn. Uh, Teamwork in smart groups, which is easy. The thing with offer the learning is that to group dynamics and individual accountability in careful management. Because when you put kids in group, when you put your students in group, sometimes uh, there is somebody who there is somebody who tends to uh, not do their, their responsibility, right? There is somebody who is very very strong and active. Okay, maybe another person is like, okay, whatever. Yeah. You need to always uh, remind.
remind them that the success of one people is the success of the human group. So if you succeed, I will succeed. Okay. So this, this one goes to then the problem is learning. Okay, you give students chance to explore the real problems and you and develop solutions through what? Through critical thinking, problem solving, and application of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, here, the consideration that you need to guide and to facilitate your students more. So you provide more sources. Okay, for example, how to solve uh, problems that deals with multiplication. Okay, so there we have to. Uh, and then the mom gives them like three, uh, triple, like three times at them. Because sometimes it was like uh, quite hard for, for students to understand, to understand the problem solving. They can do like three times three, three times four. That's easy. But when you put them in practice, in daily life practice, it's going to be very open challenging. Okay. And then the next instruction is the inquiry base. Inquiry base emphasizes more on how you question things. Question things, you discover, they get the investigations. That's why if you that's what if you teach science, it's going to be quite uh, suggested. Okay. The thing is that it requires a supportive learning environment and teacher guidance. Okay, because when I asked like, with my first grader about science, and then I asked him to make my and then I asked him questions, how are the Papad and me alike and different? It's just like, okay, and then we start to go with the, with the Papad, and then, no, this Papad, the, the hands can, can, can you, can you move your hands? And then the woman said, okay, and the woman moved the hands also, so it's like I did the same. So what is the difference? Okay. The power needs to, the power needs to be, to be controlled. Me, I can do my own movement. Okay, so, you know, that, like that always, that question is answers. And flip classroom. We discussed this last time, yeah. Flip classroom uh, needs uh, teachers to access, uh, to provide the source of knowledge. So students can explore the topic beforehand. This one deals a lot with technology and more resources. For example, your source first is the textbook. That's first and foremost. And then you give them uh, videos in YouTube. Watch this and this and this. Okay. And then later you give them. Okay, when you're done, you need to do the for uh, before class. You need to finish this quiz. It's supposed to finish it, the whole work, okay? And then when you're, and then when you are in class, you discuss about what they have learned so far. And then you support uh, their knowledge with some, uh, you know, you support, you, what's that called? When you agree on something, you call it, um, convert, you convert your students' answer. Okay, you convert their answers, and you give feedbacks uh, when they make mistakes or when they are too far, far, far more than it. So it can, it can be. So in the flip classroom, there is no more like open place one, let's be together no more. Okay? Yeah, so this one probably is more, uh, more suitable when you put it for the for students with higher needs. Okay, let me try one of these threads to your class. Yeah? Let me see if you try it. Did you try it? Yeah. Oh, like sure. Okay, how do you want? Over the learning. Is it Shari? Over the learning also. Okay. Is it Leah? Right? If I did, it's okay. If I did, 
Next one we have Socratic method. Okay, in Socratic method, students are divided into groups. Okay, you give you post them questions or problems, and then the first group answers, the second group listens, and when the first group done answering and discussing about the problem, the second group from the information that is uh, that is uh, given by the first group, the second group will also uh, give you text on that and also share the yeah. This one involves more dialogue, exploration of ideas and development of business skills. Okay. Ah, the thing is, it requires skill facilitation to play discussion effectively. Because not everyone probably wants to show a thing. Right? Usually, you can only do it in two groups. So, four people on the group. Yeah. And then, the next one is the differentiated instruction. Okay. So, here is suitable if you have, if your students are more diverse. More diverse means that in your students, you have all the three visual, aesthetic, auditory, plus of verbal social needs. Yeah, so this is very, very uh, suggested. Okay, the thing is that it requires ongoing assessment and adjustment. Remember, with the differentiated instruction, you need to do the preparation. You need to do the pre assessment, and then when you need to teach, and then from the pre assessment, then you can design the lesson plan so you know what to do. Because, each, because uh, you should be here for like that first students. <coughs> And then you give them feedback and ongoing assessment. Like what we do, like what we have now in our curriculum at TK, we have the formative and summative right now. Yeah. The formative is the best per chapter okay. or per topic. The summative is the sum, like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Okay. So that's the ongoing assessment and adjustment. The project base. Basically, uh, students are assigned for two the projects. Okay, they need to uh, hear. They uh, they need to collaborate. They need to uh, apply their thinking and, uh, and apply their knowledge to real work situation. Yeah. Here, they need to plan. The things that the the project based learning is that they need to plan. Time management, and you need to have your assessment strategies. Okay. <coughs> okay, so more questions. No? Okay. Next one is graphic organizers and mind mapping. Yeah. Here you give them visual tools. Okay, here you present visual tools to organize and represent information. For example, you give you want to teach about C for C. Yeah. Events after events in one in, in probably in a day. So um, what uh, put this in, in 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 sequence or in order so that you know how uh, rocket works. You give them then there are pictures of how rocket works. You like six pictures. Then you present it to them. This is the first one, second one, third one, and you do the graphic. And also the mind hand. So the mind mapping, you can go like, um, for example, the, uh, the first lesson is that all about you, okay? like in the garden, right? All about you. This is his name. Okay, so this is the student. Okay, this is A. Okay, now, A, what well, A likes to do, uh, this is like we describe the hobby. Then you give the pictures of the hobby. Also, A likes to the food, the favorite food. You give the picture of that thing. Right? So that's my thing. Or it can go with other topics. Right? Other topics. For example, after you do the lecture, the lecture method about um, butterflies. Okay? Butterflies go through metamorphosis. So you can do like butterflies. So it also helps. Thing is that okay, this is very effective for what kind of learners? Yeah, for visual learners, this is a very very effective. Helps to organize the information. Okay. 
one that is innovative, the one that is innovative can uh, help your students to learn better. Yeah. Um, here, what you did assessment? You did, what you did assessment? What you did assessment?
really, really careful about it. Uh, I've experienced it one time. My first year, first years teaching kindergartens, we were like going, we were like making uh, bracelets with beads. There's a bit like this big. My students actually know. Thank you. 
your class to warm up. Then you will the thing that you just and just choose and then uh, click insert or something like this. So you just just the you can just the per questions. So I I only want number one, number three, number five. You can do that. So this works. And you can, and then later you can publish. You can put it to public again, or you just want to keep it for you. That's okay. Okay. That's the. Not all give you for free. If you want to go more deeper, but they also provide how can you can generate lesson plans, how you can make a uh, presentation for your class, of course. Yeah, but as long as you just take, so what my suggestion is with the open and the other you just take what you need. And then assessment materials. Okay? Do you design places? Thank you. 
material, if we have the material that comes from the community or cultural or culture in our local communities, okay, it will be good. For example, um, a community that works on uh, saving the wildlife, after saving the wildlife, or like Greenpeace, they have their own material, right? Or KPK, right? They have their own material. To uh, give the information to the society of what they are doing and probably later uh, encourage people to do what is being uh, shared. Uh, yeah, for KPK, for example, let these students from, from the beginning be honest, right? Do not, right? Then they do not steal. If your mom gives you 10,000, don't ask your less than 10,000. And say that your mom doesn't give you any money, right? And from a small thing. Yeah? So, <coughs> it should be reflected with their first background and experience of the Okay? When you see this material. So from the data set, if you use this kind of resources, it's going to promote inclusivity and further understanding of the world. So it's going to be like very, very general. Yeah. Any questions about the resource and materials development? No? Okay. Lastly, what should you consider when you go with the Source in the resource and material development. First, these are these five things that you need to pay attention. You can modify your resource or your materials in any way, but please keep this in mind. First, it has to be aligned with the general standard. Okay? So it has to go along and with the learning objectives. Okay? If your students, if you ask if the learning objective said that they, your students should learn how to uh, identify numbers and numerals and that's what you then the materials the one the materials you just have to be about that right okay so engagement and interactivity make sure the materials that you choose are materials that will actively engage students participation and encourage them to participate in the class right because if not then they will not learn something yeah Okay. And then next, uh, make sure your material is accessible, is easy to access. Okay, because in your class you have uh, factors that probably come to the learning paths, language, and special needs. Flexibility is supposed to be able to be adapted to different teaching styles. Some of you go with like, some of you prefer cooperative learning, others probably prefer to do the problem based learning. So your material has to be material that you just has to show that flexibility. Yeah? Now last but not the least is continuous evaluation. Okay? If your students already could uh, you have always had the uh, the the window open for students who are uh, able to exceed the standard or goes below the standard. Okay, so you have the standard, right? Yeah. For students who are going to the standard, you can use this uh, material or this resource. But for those who are already extended or even below, you also have to uh, facilitate that with the resource. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. After this, I will put you in groups. Okay, a group of four as usual. Uh, I will want I will want you to discuss and make a lesson plan. Yeah, make a lesson plan. Um, that covers the activity of the day. Okay. And then let it be presented, we share with each other. Yeah, let it be presented. But for the assignment that you will bring home. This one. This is a topic that you teach. Yeah. Make a short lesson plan. Okay? But make sure your, your lesson plan uh, offers what lesson plan you should have. What is it? Your, your lesson plan that you have. First, I'm going to get the plan, sorry. 
Here. Okay, I have to make that point by one, right? Uh, to save the time, you can just search, for example. I, my topic is about math. Your next assignment. Okay. Uh, now, my 